हम्म स्टार्टिंग ऑफ द टीचिंग इतने बिजी हो आ तो तुम तब से फोन कर रही हो था ही नहीं रहे इसको बात अभी youtube पे लाइव है चलो चलो ओहो रख लो अच्छे हो यू कमिंग एट 4:30 ओके हैव गॉट एवरीथिंग रेडी ओके तो वी जस्ट हैव टू टॉप अप सम थिंग्स दैट्स इट प्रेजेंटेशन ओवर ओके बाय Hi, Doctor Funny Prayer. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Alok. Thank you, uh, Nas. Ah, uh, hi, Doctor Alok. Hi, Doctor Farooq. How are you? Ah, uh, I'm fine. How are you? Thank you. Okay. Ah, okay. uh, so ah, uh, the ah uh, presentations today is there any particular order ah uh, uh, for us to so present? So I have got a cursory order on my phone, but I think what I've got uh, is uh, uh, I'm just gonna bring that up. Yeah. Yep, I have got Jean, and that's what I was suspecting. She's not here. Then Kirti, then Naz, uh, Mayank, okay. and Anna. My suspicion is people will join. So we'll just give them a few more minutes, and then after that, what we can do is, uh, if they haven't joined, then I'll probably let Naz go first, and then you okay. talk. Yeah, is that all right? That would be great because I have to pick up my son. <laughs> no, no, absolutely, absolutely. Why don't you share the screen, uh, Naz? Go for it. Yeah. That's beautiful. We can see it. I can't seem to move it. We just give everybody just a few minutes. I think we just got two minutes, and then we'll start. Uh, Doctor Alok, I too have a case, one case to present. If I can be adjusted somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure we should because today we're just doing peer review. Okay, think, okay. Uh, what what we we're, we're doing at the moment is we're kind of taking a little bit of a break from the presentations just to give you a little bit more time to kind of assimilate some of the material before we start taking each individual pathology one by one. So okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, from Friday, Nadia will be taking respiratory distress in the preterm baby. uh and then abhijit will be covering pneumothorax on sunday and then i will be covering uh, respiratory distress in the term baby 
So we, we will take each pathology one by one, uh, uh, giving you a little bit more time to consolidate in this month. Yes. And I would say that as much as you can share, because we'll be organizing further peer review sessions, would be absolutely fantastic. And do keep just filling your logbooks in. I've had a look and basically made a list of what I feel people who fill their logbooks in have picked up from the last few sessions. So. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Go for it, Naz. It's true. Okay. Exactly, yeah. So I got a few cases and just stop me whenever, kind of that way. Go for it. Absolutely. Fine. So um, the first case, um, it was a 34 week old baby, um, very good weight, 2.87 kilos, um, not an infant of a diabetic mother, although behaved like one. Um, prompt for more than 18 hours, um, was steroid mature, mom was O negative, and I'll Say the reason why later why this is important it was a gravity too first child was seven years alive and well um there were safeguarding concerns the previous child was on child protection plan there's history of cannabis and abuse um and domestic violence um so this baby is a spontaneous vaginal delivery no resuscitation required i was noted to be grunting within 15 minutes and had sats of 85 on admission within half an hour the baby came to the neonatal unit so it was a nasal cannula oxygen initially on a trickle and then went on to CPAP in FI2 of 21% in air, but extremely tachypnic, the respiratory rate of 80 to 100. Um, the first gas um, showed respiratory acidosis with low glucose, um, but by the two hours of age on CPAP, the gas actually pretty much were normalized as such. The reason I mentioned about the O negative is my, the baby's bullet ribbon was 140, so it was above the exchange line. So the baby had two things going on. One was respiratory distress and sounded like an RDS or a TTN on clinical picture. And also um, the baby also had um, mom was O negative. Baby turned out to be A positive, which we didn't know at that time, um, but also had uh, hyperbilirubinemia, a hemolytic disease, newborn, uh, rhesus incompatibility. And we actually went on to give IVIG and an exchange transfusion. Yeah, we don't do that. I haven't done that for the last, I don't know how many years, but there's always... Um, these things happen. Um, so uh, this is the x-ray at eight hours of age on CPAP. The baby was in air, but very tachypneic, but otherwise actually pretty settled. We would just the x-ray mainly to put the lines in and also obviously to look at the chest, which um, is not that, it, it's a bit ground glassy, but not that exciting as such. Um, NG in a good position. You can see the UV had gone in the liver, but we then repositioned. So the reason I showed the x-rays is because that's the time when I did the lung ultrasound as well. Now I have been a bit cheeky. Um, I've downloaded a few of them and I've taken um, videos on my phone and then uploaded yeah, it. Really yeah. um, so this was on R1. Um, and you can see the lung sliding really well. Um, I don't know if I've done something or why there's a break over there, but uh, there seems to be like a break in the pleura over there. But um, you can see the A lines, but there's a lots of B lines as well going through as well. And you can see this baby's really tachypnic. Yeah, as well. yeah. um, on the R2 um, as well, um, so the liver shadow was coming in, I think that, um, the 12S linear probe, which we have is quite big, actually it takes quite a lot of, um, you can actually just do one actually on the whole chest yes. as such. Um, but you can um, see that there are, a lot, although there are A lines present and sorry, the pleura is sliding and moving and there seems to be a lot of comet lines as well, but a lot of um, B lines as well, along with A lines. So AB profile, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think, uh, so again, uh, very nice uh, images. Your focus is beautiful. So if you could just point towards your focus, Naz, just at the top. Yeah, that's beautiful. So can you see how lovely the plural line looks because the focus is at the appropriate point? And this is quite important, actually. You know, you have a baby with respiratory distress in the first eight hours. If you don't have, uh, you know, uh, an x-ray, 
most people would definitely want to make sure you don't have a pneumothorax, not with this clinical history, but just in general. And keeping your, your marker there is really good. And again, the beauty of a linear probe, uh, you can see multiple rib spaces. So you've beautifully demonstrated at least two intercostal spaces, three ribs at the top with the plural sliding. And what I would say looks like an A-dominant profile. Uh, so if we just play that image, so that's an A profile. Uh, I think you're right. You probably can see B lines there, but is this one taken from your phone? No. So this was not taken from my phone. This is actually from. It's the, it's taken directly from the machine. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, and I'm really okay. bad at taking. So no, not no problems. So the only comment that I have at this particular point is you're using a frequency of ten at this particular yeah. point, which is okay, but you can play with the frequency a little bit. So you. The, the reason I, I'd say that is like, you've got good depth at four centimeters, but naturally with the frequency being on the higher side, you're seeing the superficial areas very nicely. But once you kind of hit two and a half to four centimeters, you, you lose out a little bit on what's going on over there. And there's no harm in that situation in actually taking this opportunity to play with your frequency, just to see whether you can get slightly better images with the depth, you might want to actually drop it a little bit. Now, I agree completely that we kind of talk about frequencies of at least uh, nine and above, but uh, I would say have a play and that will give you a little bit in terms of better, deeper images. Uh, the image on the right hand side is again, it's a beautiful image, a very nice plural line, very good focus of the plural line. Uh, definitely above the liver if you just play that image you've got very classical you've got at least one compact beeline there at the bottom which you can see so you want to highlight that yeah that's beautiful that's where your arrow is and then a few beelines between the, the ribs at the top um, so i would probably say that you know anybody could argue with that's an ab profile in transition uh, whether you have a lung point that will develop there in due course as fluid basically gets absorbed a double lung point, uh, apologies, not a lung point. So uh, let's let's have a look at your other images. I think the images are beautiful. So um, look, why yeah. is there a break over here? Is this because my probe is not? No, no, my gut feeling is this just a little bit of artifact there. And it might be just where Plura overlaps on itself while you're having sliding. Okay. Yeah. Your, uh, your images, you, the, the, the perpendicular nature of the images is beautiful as demonstrated by the ribs. Thank you. Um, so this is on L1. Yep, very nice. Yeah. And um, again, just lovely pure sliding and then lots of A lines sitting there. And I think it's more of an A profile. Yep, I would and agree. On the L2 as well, <laughs> the heart kept coming in the way I yeah. did have to. So the, the best way to do that is, is to take your probe when it's held longitudinally and start from the medial end of the midpoint of the sternum. Can you see me? Yeah. So my probe basically starts here. The heart is here. So when you try to take this area and the probe is coming and the heart comes into the way. So really what you want to do is higher up R1 and slide it across. So you might have to just try and get the heart out of the way. And then after that, what I'd say is as you go down, the heart comes in. So you really need to get the lung medially and literally. So don't feel too stressed, uh, you know, about it coming in the way. I mean, classical A profiles here, lungs that look really, really good, transitioning well with plural sliding. For your clips, at the moment when you play them, they they play really nicely, but they stop after just a few seconds. So yeah. you can adjust them to be saved as longer loops. Okay. Try to get loops of about six seconds. Okay. But yeah, very nice. What was your clinical feeling? Um, th this was RDS actually, um, clinically, but uh, on the ultrasound doesn't seem like it. Yep. Um, but what, clinically, I, yeah. I see this baby, baby behave like an infant of a diabetic mother. I know the steroid mature, but or, and actually, and actually, I've got images later on. If you got TTN, clinically, you'd expect the baby to recover quite quickly. This baby on day two is still on vapor therm of seven liters and 30% oxygen, so it doesn't fit. A TTM picture, but and CRP on the baby is less than five. Okay, uh, so I, the only thing I'd point out over here is your lungs are not showing me the feel of RDS. And my clinical feeling is if you did an echo in this baby, you might actually see that the baby has a, either pulmonary hypertension, which is part and parcel of delayed perinatal adaptation, and that might 
be what actually explains the respiratory distress and the respiratory needs. It's delayed perinatal adaptation with pulmonary pressures taking time to come down. Your lungs look beautiful. I mean, at eight hours of age, the only thing that I'd be very cautious about again in babies like this is that you're not missing an early onset GBS. So yeah. CRPs, you mentioned are absolutely- CRP is fine, cultures were negative. Both the CRPs, in fact, were less than five. This as playing with that umbilical line 20 times and giving an exchange. That's and really- that is the other thing. Like you've done an exchange, a double volume exchange, and often these babies, you, you, did you top the baby up with a little bit or were you using pack cells? With pack cells, we don't need to top up because the PCV goes up. So, yeah, no, the PC, the piece we dropped down from uh, 190 to 160 P exchange transfusion, but then, sure. up. but obviously, we do a double volume exchange and we landed up giving a little bit more because we had to flush the UA. So, I it could be fluid filled, uh, and I have images after 48 hours, but it's just, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I agree on the ultrasound, it looks more like a PTN. Initially, I would have said it's this is TTN, but the way then the baby behavior, it could be a combination of, you know, Both, because, a little bit know. of overlap. Yep. Uh, let's have there, was no pre, there was no yeah. pre-post-ductal saturation difference or anything. Sure. So R3, R4? Um, so R3, um, again, just a profile as such. I Getting the liver over yes. <laughs> you will. You will. So when you're using a linear probe, it's good to get the liver. Because you really need to see that that margin. And that's important because that's where you'll pick up pleural effusions. And again, what I'd say is that the only point that goes in favor of TTN versus, I'm not really seeing lung consolidations here at all. So for me, uh, an ultrasound diagnosis of RDS would be quite difficult to make. R3 looks very wet again. And I just wonder, again, you've done a double volume extension. You've topped up a little bit, whether you've got a little bit of left atrial or left ventricular volume loading after so the exchange. This is pre-transfusion. This is pre-transfusion. Alert. This is pre-transfusion. Okay. This is just when you put the lines in. So this is pre-transfusion. In terms of clinical course, what did, what happened to your FiO2 over time? So FiO2 remained 21% initially. Then uh, a post-exchange went up to 25% and then 30% that way. So... On at 48 hours, the baby was still having um, it uh, was on vapor therm of 30 percent oxygen. That okay. Um, this is not L4, sorry, this is L4, L3, sorry. Um, what is yeah, so um, but I just wondered there is more. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, a, a B profile, yeah, a B profile completely, profile, completely. And I think what it reflects is the fact that as you move from the front to the back of the chest in a supine child you will get gravity dependent fluid accumulation in the interstitial spaces. So, but yeah, this is a dominant B profile that you can see. Again, what I'd say is that if you look at the plural margin here, it looks very regular. It's blurred, but regular. So not irregular at this particular point, but a dominant B profile. And uh, I mean, if uh, clinically from our perspective, uh, this kind of shows transition over a period of time, then you you know, there's some babies who can get sick with secondary surfactant deficiency. Uh, I'm just curious, the repeat scan, what does that show? And so I have a repeat scan as well. Um, mm-hmm. So at, this is 48 hours. So we did an exchange around 10 hours of age, 12 hours of age, um, over four hours. So this is 24 hours literally after the exchange as such. Um, so the babies, as I said, in paper term, seven liters in FI2 actually had crept up to 30% by now. Um, clinically, the baby gases were fine. Baby was um, stable, but yep. uh, again, there's just a profile, but lots of yep. comet lines coming yep. through yep. as well. Um, and this is the R two. Yeah. Again, very similar. Um, yep. just a profile with lots of comet lines coming through there. Beautiful. Very nice images again. Very very nice images. Yeah. And then the L one. Um, and this is a perfect L1. That's what you'd see with the lung. Again, regular pleura, if you just play that again, uh, but more of a B profile, especially the superior part of the lung. Uh, so the left lung in particular just looks a little bit more wet than the right lung. I just wonder, there's a bit of a, there's a lot of dropout, I feel, um, with these images. So you have the heart coming in on the right-hand yeah. side. And yeah. my gut feeling is it's the depth beyond two and a half centimeters that you're struggling with a little bit. And I think just playing with the frequency, 
uh, reducing it a bit to try and see that you can get a little bit more depth penetration. The other way to kind of uh, try and uh, get those images uh, a little bit more crisp at this particular point is to try and sharpen the image. So do you have sharp mode on your scanner? No, but I shall look around. Have a look, have a look for it because you can you can make the images a little bit more sharp. Uh, in, in these, I mean, I'm getting all the information I need. I'll be really honest. Can we have a look at L2? I'm just curious. I just want to have a look at the middle of L2. So that's the heart actually giving you that shadow. Yeah. So yeah. just, uh, there's this area in the center. They are A lines, basically. They are not, that's yeah. not a consolidation yeah. because of the heart shadow. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, again, clinically, my feeling is I would agree with your inclination and your clinical feel to kind of, you know, want to kind of classify this as RDS. My clinical feeling would still be this is delayed perinatal adaptation. Most probably a, a, a B profile transitioning to an A profile gradually, but maybe doing a double volume exchange has resulted in a little bit of volume loading. Overload, yeah. yeah. And I would not be surprised if you did an echo and you found a little bit of pulmonary hypertension there uh, with that. But yeah, that is the beauty of having, I mean, my, my, my key reason for kind of going through this case in great detail is it's a beautiful example of, you never gave this baby surfactant. No. No, and you know- again, I didn't integrate this baby either. So a very expensive kind of a drug to give, even with your clinical field. A lot of people would argue, well, he's not, not met the clinical threshold for surfactant. So what is the lung ultrasound actually telling us? Well, actually it is helping us debate whether we think this is RDS versus transient tachypnea versus, my feeling is a third category. And a third category that's less well described as the one that I've described in my video on the baby taking the first breath. And what it classically says is that about 15% about of babies will be left with residual B profile in some way or the other for an extended period of time. And uh, that is really because there's a variation in the amount of interstitial fluid absorption. And there are things that can interfere with that process, in particular in exchange transfusion, you know, with volume loading. So doing lung ultrasound at this particular stage keeps you relatively happy. Uh, you've looked and made sure there's no pneumothorax. And in particular, you know, there's no evidence of a shred sign. There are no consolidations to indicate your baby's got infection. So, you know, it's very reassuring for you to have and follow it up in that particular way. But in terms of your images, I wouldn't be too stressed about the depth. Do not worry about it. Play with the frequency a little bit and try and see if you can... Uh, so when, when I take the class on RDS, we'll talk a little bit about using dynamic range. Now, you can use dynamic range in this particular situation to make your deep images uh, a little bit better. The, the challenge with it is it will make your superficial images very, very bright. So we, we'll talk about it next to next Monday on the 19th. Yep. Yeah, so that's the R3 again, very similar to the previous one. And Beautiful transitioning language. It's very similar. So you just said that not much had changed actually in the 48 hours on the ultrasound at least. Okay. It'll be interesting. Let's see what he's like when we, we chat again next Sunday. We won't chat, uh, you know. I, I, be... Yeah, I, will, I won't know because I'm going to be in Florida, but yeah. I'm oh, going to the Newborn Brain Society. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's go for the next case. Okay, so the next one is a 31 week, 1.1 uh, kilo baby. Um, Spontaneous vaginal delivery, steroid mature, had delayed port thumping. Um, so a perfect preterm baby, essentially. CPAP initially, just very briefly, and then in AF since day two, um, was part of the feed one study. So gradual feeding because of that, but then fully fed very quickly. Um, day 15, when I scanned, I was establishing breastfeeding in a hot pot and in air. So um, this is the R1. Um, I found this really interesting. So if you look at that history, I would have thought that this is going to be A profile, some B profile, maybe, you know, but it, I just interestingly, there was a lot of, um, there's A profile, but there's a lot of B lines coming through as well. It's a, it's, you've got a, a lung, a double lung point there. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know, the top, so the superior part of the lung field has aerated really nicely. Uh, and the, the bottom of the rung field in R1 basically shows what is a classical B profile with lots of B lines. Uh, I wouldn't quite say they're columns. Very nice plural sliding. Again, uh, your gain settings are beautiful. And again, just to say that we're losing out on the depth. So 
it's probably related to the penetration of the probe because you're using a frequency here of 12 and you probably just need to drop the frequency a little bit. Yeah, no problems. The images are beautiful. So very nice. So can I just ask, how, how many hours old was the baby when we did 15 this? 15 days, 15 days old. Okay. In and air. how much FIO2? In air, in air. Okay, lovely. Yeah. In air. Nothing. So just apart from CPAP initially for 24 hours actually has been in air. Doing really well, saturating beautifully, trying to breastfeed at 33 weeks. Amazing. Uh, uh, this was the R2. I, this, and this can is see an that, April <laughs> The baby was hiccuping as well at that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, the, a good lung siding, lots of comet lines, and mainly in April. So. Yeah. Um, so this was uh, the L1. Yep. And again, um, good plural sliding um, over there. Um, a lines uh, there. There's a bit of deep lines as well coming yep. there. And similarly over here as well. Yep. I'd probably say a dominant A profile L2. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there is an element of a B, a B profile in L1. Excellent. And then the R3. Um, so as you go down, gravity makes a big difference. So again, more of a B profile okay. with sliding. Very nice, sharp, brutal line that you see in relation to the liver there. Yep, beautiful. And then L3 again. So I'd call that an A profile because each intercross, maybe just two, two B lines, maybe yeah. the bottom space might have a... But I'd, I'd probably call that an A profile. So normal for me at this particular point. Yeah. I, I didn't get the back. Um, no problems. Absolutely fine. I can understand completely. I mean, clinically over there, one of your questions would be, well, you know, slightly unusual. You expect a baby in air to kind of give you a complete A profile. And what I'd say is that uh, as we've described and as the literature has described, a lot of babies with uh, virtually no respiratory needs uh, in terms of treatment at birth uh, surfactant deficiency, uh, you know, not needing treatment, evolve into what we call as very mild chronic lung disease. Previously used to be called wilson mckitty kind of uh, syndrome. And I mean, clinically, it's not apparent because this baby has well aerated lung in the other areas. But some of these babies sometimes might go on to develop an oxygen requirement, maybe in the third or fourth week, you know, which stays for a, a week or two, 10 days, and then completely disappears. And again, it's just a reflection of the fact that there is an element of surfactant deficiency in immature lungs that doesn't reach a threshold of treatment, but it takes a very long time for the actual interstitial fluid to get absorbed. So what you're seeing there is not surfactant deficiency, it's just interstitial fluid that's taking its time in the interstitial spaces to actually get absorbed. And it might be that this actually takes anywhere from six weeks to three months. You can see uh, small amounts of B lines, you know, as we've said, less than three per space in completely normal babies where, you know, uh, you'd expect complete A profiles, but obviously this baby being slightly more preterm, this is going to take a slightly longer time. But yeah, very nice images. I, I, I think in terms of kind of just my critique at the moment is it's, I think what we'd like to see is how, how we challenge ourselves with regards to the depth in trying to get those images. Thank you. Do okay. you have time to present another one? Yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it. We have a lot of time today. I'm not doing any teaching. So So this is another preterm baby, 27 weeker. Uh, again, good weight, um, male child. Um, was given one dose of steroid only, so was not steroid mature. Spontaneous vaginal delivery, did have delayed coat clamping, um, initially required inflation breaths, but then was on peep of CPAP since then. And um, so the CPAP from day one to day three, and then we changed the vapor term and currently is on seven liters per minute of vapor term, FI2 of 25%. He's fully fed now. He's had five days of parental nutrition. He never had any antibiotics ever. And he's day seven when I scanned him. So this is the x-ray on day one, which essentially just is RDS. Yeah, ground glass appearance. Yeah, mild RDS. Yep. Um, so this is on day seven now, scanning yep. him. He's on seven liters of vapor therm in 25%. So this is R1. Yeah. 
and it just seems like a white lung almost there's some kind of b lines that so what i'd say is uh, again uh, he's very he, he, is he tachypneic how, how he is tachypneic he's around respiratory rate of around 60 70 sometimes that way um and what are his co2s running at he is running at 7 okay so that's not too bad it's about 50 so yeah well, this is a b profile i'd say that at the moment you've got what i'd say is a white out over here you know and again you've got the depth much better so 3 cm 3 1/2 cm and 27 weaker would be absolutely fine so you can see again the frequency on the probe at the stage was 12 12 so you know again just in terms of the learning curve and getting a, a good idea of uh, how frequency helps you can see using a high frequency here actually doesn't make a big difference because you're getting all the information you need i think if you could in any baby under 28 weeks get 3 and 1/2 cm of lung anteriorly posteriorly you'll cover the whole lung laterally between those three fields so don't feel too stressed about needing four or five in those small babies but for the bigger babies i'd say once you kind of hitting over 28 weeks you want a depth of about 4 and i think for the very big babies uh, i'd say when we're hitting term you want depths of about 4 and 1/2 5 cm but yeah this is a what i'd say is a, a, an ais kind of picture and if i can see this kind of picture in every field which i can in r2 as well so let's have a look at r2 as well so you can see some a lines just there marginally so yeah but this is a b profile classical b profile uh, ais uh and yeah i'd probably say that at least r1 r2 uh, if i see r3 as well then i would probably say that's completely white out yeah that's l1 l2 yeah so again yeah yeah so again the profile actually could be an ais kind of and even the l2 yeah even with the heart coming in between completely white yeah completely white. completely white yeah so again just a little bit better aeration of the left upper zone if we just go back to that previous slide is compared to the left lower zone and often the upper areas of the lung tend to aerate better just in terms of travel of peep and recruitment what kind of peep pressure are you on so we are on 7 liters of vapor therm oh you're on vapor therm okay so, yeah that's good that's good so one of the questions that the audience has asked so that's margarita is that when we go to the back the the pleura doesn't sometimes seem continuous now are you trying to get the back without putting the baby prone are you doing so when you do the r3 is the lateral side but are you in the middle or are you at the posterior axillary line i'm at the middle axillary line you're in the mid axillary line and are you so what it says when so you're in mid axillary maybe so small line, that essentially it becomes but yeah, 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 yeah. so the pleura can seem discontinuous i wouldn't worry too much about it but classically what you've got here is some subpleural consolidations so the the top margin yeah. yeah that's it yeah so if you just play the image so you have subpleural consolidation there with the pleural lines but these are basically what i'd say compact d lines that are coming through so again a classical very severe b profile yeah i don't have the back Um, no problems so i mean clinically what i'd be saying is this baby is probably going to evolve into having a little bit of chronic lung disease he got two doses of surfactant he didn't get any surfactant okay no that's okay that's perfectly reasonable and what i'd say is that a lot of us you know uh, about 50% of babies uh, in the coin trial actually got away without having surfactant i think what you might find is that if you followed this baby up and what people are doing very nicely at this stage and Uh, Almedina, whose work you know has has uh, has kind of focused on this, will be talking to us about is is predicting an outcome of chronic lung disease and its severity, as well as how you manage it. And in particular, you know, one of the questions that we sometimes ask ourselves are: Is this a baby who might, with work of breathing and clinical profile, need a little bit more in terms of respiratory support? Not your baby, but she's used lung ultrasound scores. to try and make judgments of improvement but if they remain persistently high what you define as high and how that correlates with an evol- kind of evolution into chronic lung disease and in those kind of intermediate phases once babies have come through that first week of life what we might be able to do from a respiratory perspective to kind of manage that and maybe try and improve things it's not something that we're practicing at the moment where i work 
uh, because I think clinically from our perspective, most of our babies are extreme preterms. They stay on the ventilator for a very long period of time. But what you'll find is for babies over 26 weeks, a lot of units are now moving towards Lisa and trying to keep these babies. We off. did we did think about Lisa and I, my plan was, so knowing the clinical picture and this baby only, I mean, mom had only one dose of steroid. My plan was to give Lisa, but the baby actually didn't go above 35%, I believe, in retrospectively, I think the nurses have documented one or two episodes of 35%. But actually, when we were with the baby, the baby never went above. So I didn't feel I could justify giving it. Maybe I should have at that point. No, but no, I, I at the same agree. time, um, it, the thing is that um, if I saw this, if I'd done this ultrasound, say, on day one, would it have pushed me to give the surfactant? And now that the same thing is there at day seven does it change anything that way on an ultrasound i think what i'd say to you is that theoretically using a lung ultrasound score and having a lung ultrasound score say in the range of eight plus in the first two hours of life might be achieved when your fio2 does not meet a threshold and that's why a lot of people who want to use lung ultrasound for treatment in babies who have RDS, especially under 32 weeks of gestation, will try and do their lung ultrasound within or at about two hours of age and try and get their scores because most of the purists, that's Nadia's group, uh, you know, Dr. Bratt, they would basically say that you're meeting those scores and that's showing you severity of illness before the baby's actually achieving those thresholds. And actually their argument is that those babies do need treatment. I think what I'd say is for us, the, the challenge is obviously it's a, it's a huge change in practice because we've traditionally been kind of trained on using the European guidelines for respiratory distress syndrome, which kind of talks about FIO2 cutoff thresholds and respiratory acidosis. But I think there's a school of thought, which is kind of saying that actually waiting for that duration might mean that you're delaying surfactant and that it is not as efficacious. I'm not sure, and I think Nadia might disagree with me, that we have enough evidence to say that you can either make judgments based on lung ultrasound alone at this point. I think we need more studies to kind of come out. I mean, the question that people ask me, well, will I use it in my practice? I think if I have a baby, say for example, who is hitting a threshold of between 25 and 30% under 32 weeks of gestation, and I get a dominant lung ultrasound score, which is over eight, at about two hours of age, I'd have a very low threshold of Lisa. Very low threshold of doing Lisa in that case. And in those situations, what I'd say is, what is very important, again, is using your clinical judgment. You know, I'm not saying that you just look at the lung ultrasound alone. Look at the work of breathing on the baby. Look at the CO2 clearance. Take everything into account. But yeah, my threshold would swing. And that's because I'm doing it. And it's interesting. You know, as the group progresses, we'll be speaking to you in six months to kind of ask you what your thoughts are, because obviously you'll gain a huge amount of experience in doing this, which you'll share with us. So, you know, it'll be very interesting to see with 40 people in this group who are learning from each other. It'll be very interesting to see what your own clinical experience says about those judgments. But beautiful images, and uh, please uh, keep, keep, keep going on. I think what I'd say is that in terms of being able to demonstrate plural sliding, A, B lines, profiles, uh, getting your images, the quality, the perpendicular, I think we've achieved a huge amount. And I'm just pointing out, today is, it's the 6th of February. We're only three weeks into this journey. So you can see how the learning curve for lung ultrasound, it's not difficult. Uh, I think what is very important is just continuing to practice. Thank you. So we're going to move on. And the next person I've got Dr. is... Dr. Uh, can I have a question? Yeah, sure, please. Uh, looking at this case, look at the history, 27 weaker, and then uh, given, I think, one dose of uh, steroid, and look at the X-ray, X-ray suggestive of RDS, and the uh, ultrasound is nearly a picture of B profile. So what would be our final impression? So at this particular point, we're seven days into... Just B profile the... or... Yeah, we're seven days into the illness... Your, your final impression at this particular point for me would be evolving lung disease. I think what we've got is a baby who's probably got evolving lung disease. And what you need to do is you need to do weekly ultrasounds to look at the disease progression. Is this getting better? What we might have had is a, a clinical picture that was more severe before we saw this scan. 
And that is why serial ultrasounds are very important. But what you might find is that if we repeat the scan in about a week's time, what is going to affect this baby's clinical progress is good nutrition, uh, growth of the lung, uh, the ability for the baby to generate more surfactant because there are more alveolar type 2 pneumocytes. So all of this will actually positively influence this baby's course, which means that if I do this lung ultrasound in a week and I see more of an A profile or an AB profile as opposed to B profile, that's lung improvement for me. On mm. the other hand, if this baby were to get an infection or say, for example, get, uh, you know, have a, a lide related sepsis and take a knock and not grow as well, then all of those things might interfere with that process of transition where a baby has evolving lung disease in the context of previously having had RDS so that he might take much longer to improve. And then clinically, let's say, and I'm, I'm not predicting for this baby, but if this baby then has an oxygen need at 30 days, clinically, then what we're doing is making a diagnosis of chronic lung disease. I think with time, what will happen is that as people start doing lung ultrasound more and more, the definitions of what is established lung disease, when it becomes established, and all of these things will change with research. At the moment we've made an arbitrary cutoff of saying that chronic lung disease is an oxygen requirement at 28 days BPD. Uh, but really what we're now starting to see with both chest X-ray and lung ultrasound is you can have babies who have oxygen needs whose lungs don't look so bad, new BPD but where mm -hmm. their inability to grow the lungs at the rate with which they grow is very different to what BPD looked like maybe two decades back when it was complete cystic degeneration and damage to the lungs. And I suspect now with lung ultrasound, what we'd be able to see is we'd be able to define that progress much better. I think it's a really good question for us to ask Almudina when she presents. But yeah, I'd say that you've got an evolution of lung disease at this particular point. What you don't have is evidence of pneumonia consolidations that are deep, uh, shred sign. Uh, what I don't have at this particular point is any areas of atelectasis. I've got a B profile. What I might be able to do if I thought this baby had work of breathing in a high CO2 is use maybe a higher flow rate, uh, which obviously I know that seven is the max that we use in the UK with the prong sizes that are there, but CPAP might mean more recruitment. So you look at your baby clinically and you make those judgments and then you can repeat a lung ultrasound and see if you transition to an A profile. But that's how you'd be using it in this context. Does that answer your question a little yeah, bit? Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Okay. Only one, one thing more. You mentioned yeah. in one of the, I think when she, she, she was presenting, one of the posterior uh, aspect scan, you mentioned some subpleural consolidation. Isn't it a feature of RDS? Yeah, but again, what I'd say is that most of the people who've done lung ultrasound research have looked at the lungs and tried to define RDS on scans done in the first few days. So we're yeah. defining a diagnosis of RDS, even when we look radiologically, based on X-ray findings in the first few days of life. However, for babies about 10 to 12 days of age, there are sequelae left because of that respiratory distress syndrome. Now, we don't call it chronic lung disease, but they can have a reticular granular appearance. They can still have air bronchograms and a ground glass appearance. We don't quite call that RDS, but it's the residual impact of RDS in a baby who's gradually either getting better or worse. So I would, I would focus on trying to define what this lung ultrasound or that chest X-ray is telling you in the context of what you can see clinically. And for mm. me, from what Nas is describing as a baby who's actually stable, who's got a little bit of work of breathing on Optiflow, who's probably, my gut feeling is, I think if we'd done the, the, uh, the ultrasound earlier on, it probably would have been worse than what we're seeing at this particular point, in that we might have seen a complete whiteout of all areas, no mm. aeration at all. So again, if we'd serially been able to follow those things up, we might actually say this looks better. Thank you. Uh, so just... Uh, just looking through any other questions, uh, Jean, uh, technical error with PowerPoint file on my side. Can I go last? Absolutely fine. So Dr. Fani Priya, are you able to share your slides? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just uh, see if I can. So I've got Kirti next. Kirti, are you also ready to share? Yeah. Okay, beautiful. Can I... Is my is my screen visible, Doctor Alok? Visible. Yeah, it is visible. Okay, okay. Then I'll uh, start. Uh, 
it's a beautiful photograph. So I have I have uh, one case for discussion today. So the mes machine which uh, we have is a, a Philips uh, machine, and uh, I have used a linear probe, and I have used a superficial. There is no lung preset module, so I have used a vascular venous. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, you've settings. got a frequency of 12, depth of 3, I can see. That's beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll be commenting on uh, plural line. How is the lung sliding? Uh, A profile, B profile, and a uh, few comments on the pathology. So this is a baby S who is a 25 weeker, actually a twin baby. This is T2. Was a extreme low birth weight, 638 gram. Currently, baby is around two and a half month old. Was initially a case of uh, uh, E1S uh, and then had HMD, received surfactant, had a turbulent stormy course, had a PDA, and then had esnitobacter vap, then late onset sepsis with meningitis. Currently, is having BPD and there were multiple extubation failures. Uh, so, uh, at the time of uh, uh, scan, the baby was uh, intubated on SIMV mode of ventilation. So, these are the images. Uh, I don't have the images on the right. I have images only on the left side. No problem. So, yeah, this is uh, L1 and L2, which is uh, showing... Uh, there, I could not uh, see any A lines. It is uh, uh, mostly it is uh, B lines, and there are no areas of any collapse or consolidation which I can see on this scan. Okay. Uh, and then this is uh, L3, L4, where uh, 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 in this also I cannot see any A profile. Uh, yeah. It is uh, uh, it's uh, predominantly a, a B profile. And on the left, I feel there is a uh, subplural consolidation, which I could see. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, uh, dominant B profile with B lines uh, visible in the upper half. Just play that again, because you can clearly see some very nice subplural consolidations towards the end of the image. So, just uh, there. So, that, so, right. So if you go to the left of the screen at the top, yeah, you can see subtotal consolidations there. Very yeah. good. Yeah. No yeah. problems. Yeah, carry on. Uh, and then this is uh, L5, L6, the posterior region. Here also it is uh, predominantly uh, uh, B profile. And uh, <coughs> I could not uh, clearly comment what it is. But in the middle of the field, I can see, uh, I think probably it is looking like a shred sign. Uh, no, no, this is a consolidation. This is a consolidation. So what you've got is what is quite a deep consolidation at this particular point. Shred sign is usually seen in context of the plura. The only place that okay. I think you might see a little bit of a shred sign is above that. So just if you take your cursor to the brightest part of the screen. Yeah. Yeah. And just move to the left left okay go to the left further left further left go up uh, no 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 it's a, not there to the left to the left go to the plural line at the top on the left okay yeah okay. just there, there there stop there stop there so further okay. to, the right, to the right to the right a little bit tricky yeah so just a little bit more centimeter to the right that's okay. it. Just stay there. Now play the image. That's the only area of slightly irregular, I would say, appearance that I can see that gives me a little bit okay. of an impression of shreds. I'm not really clinically convinced that is. What you've clearly okay. got is a, a consolidation in the middle over there with plural that looks a little bit irregular in regions. I mean, for me, mm. this would fit with a, a clinical picture when I look at your history of a baby who's got a little bit of chronic lung disease. And... Mm. Uh, my, my question again is, does the left lung look worse than the right on the chest x-ray? Uh, yeah, almost it is similar on the chest x-ray. Both the lungs are like, uh, uh, there were multiple areas of collapse, uh, consolidation. consolidation. On bar. Yeah. yeah, both so, the sides. I mean, for so me, are there any, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, like how can I tell whether this area is a collapse or a consolidation? Okay. So what I'd say is that for a complete atelectasis, you'll get no plural line at the top, but you do have a plural line there. Okay. 
okay okay it is okay, okay. for complete atelectasis or complete collapse mm. you'll have no aeration mm. the other thing mm. that i would say that goes in favor of the fact that this is more a collapse uh, sorry a consolidation as opposed to a collapse is the fact that it's relatively static so at this particular point what you've got is it's not moving in relation to the plural line vertically it's moving horizontally okay. with the plural line okay so again okay. because it's moving with the plural line i'd say it's more likely that this is a consolidation as opposed to an area of atelectasis but a, a sure way of kind of sometimes trying to differentiate the two is changing the position of the baby or using a slightly mm. higher peep so is this baby on non invasive respiratory support no baby was intubated is on uh, invasive ventilation and what's your crp uh, uh last crp yep yeah baby is already on uh, covered on with antibiotics okay i mean just a small area below that consolidation there's a small area that's slightly hypoechoic Yeah. Uh, this if, no, no, no. If you go right back to the consolidation in the middle, back up, back up, back up. There, 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 there. You were just there, to the right. So there's this. If, yeah, just there. There's a small area that looks hypoechoic. If you play the image yeah. again, just that area there. Again, the question from my perspective is that's not in relation to the pleura, so I wouldn't class okay. that as shred sign. i think that's just an area of consolidation shred sign is usually seen in relation to the pleura and there's usually fall back of tissue from the pleural line for shred sign to be apparent oh i i mean you've oh. got a dominant b profile there with a consolidation that's visible yeah. i think evidence of chronic lung disease for me is what i'd say okay okay there's, thank you and one more yeah. uh, one more uh, image uh of l5 and l6 here yeah, now, also i can see now you can see a very nice shred sign hmm. okay so so just this is a very very nice image beautiful and this is so again what i'd say guys is while you're playing your frames at the moment what is happening is i'd really like you to keep your images in loop so do you know how to put your images in loop so when you go uh, to our point no, not exactly when you go to our yeah. point uh you click on mm -hmm. your video double mm -hmm. click on your video and basically it will say loop until the end so okay loop so by keeping it in loop okay. it just gives us a slightly better feel of the image while you're playing it so yeah. your this is the posterior part of the lung l5 l6 and have you done this supine or prone uh i have done it in prone position okay so again a very dominant b profile but if you just play the image again you've got a completely destroyed pleural margin now with what are lucent areas below the pleura that is classical shred sign but in addition to the shred sign you've got these white areas below that you can see mm. that this is dynamic air bronchogram so just below uh, so the i could not i could not uh, follow you i could not get it exactly So when you look at L five L six, yeah, yeah. So when you look at L five L six, if you look at the pleural margin at the top of the image, it's completely destroyed. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, right. Look at the area below that that looks dark and black. Uh, which one? So, if you take your marker. Hmm. So L five L six. Just put your marker yeah. five L six. Now go above L five L six to the plural line. Okay. Yeah. Further up. Further up there. Can you see the plural? Yeah. Can you see any plural? No, I it's cannot destroyed. see any plural. It's destroyed. So yeah, it's below destroyed. Below that plural, you see these oh. dark black areas. Yeah. Right. Dark black areas. Yeah, I can. Are, they're classical. Right. 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 Classical right. shred sign. below those areas okay. you can see some bright white areas yeah right play the image again yeah right those bright white areas below that come and go hmm they're dynamic air bronchograms okay 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 right i i didn't understand when i was uh, doing the scan there were some areas which were coming and then they were going in between yeah, so that's dynamic air bronchogram right. for you and again what i'd say 
from my perspective is that you've got air coming in and out. Now, if you have complete atelectasis, collapse, there'll be no air coming in and out. You're not going to find dynamic. I mean, for me, a real question about this consolidation now is, is this mnemonic consolidation? And hence, I'm asking what your CRP is. What is your CRP? I don't exactly have the detail of CRP at the moment. Okay, it's a very nice image, but clearly that is an area that I'd be worried might have an element of infection. I'd also say yeah. that extremely preterm babies who develop right. cystic chronic lung disease where the lungs get damaged, uh, right. you can have an appearance very similar to it. You can have this appearance in PIE as well pulmonary interstitial emphysema but i think if i were to clinically oh. correlate your baby would probably have chronic lung disease and again yeah. it, was that the x-ray you were showing us yeah yeah i'll i'll just show the x-ray so this is the uh, recent x-ray which was done on third yeah so again you've got fibrotic scarring in that right side but if you look at the left right. side left upper lobe and mm -hmm. the left middle lobe now this is where i would say lung ultrasound is beautiful because actually this x-ray won't tell you whether that's a mnemonic consolidation or chronic lung disease. I think right. if you had a high CRP in this baby and you were concerned about mm. infection with the shred sign, I would be mm. very worried that this baby has, you know, a, a possible mnemonic consolidation yes. there. Right. So can yes, you see how right. important clinical correlation is? It's absolutely crucial mm. that you're really thinking clinically. But again, very nice kind of images that you can see, uh, a good exposure, good demonstration of the plural line perpendicular. Uh, your depth is decent. Uh, you, your focus could be a little bit higher. So you can hmm. try to get the focus of the plural line, which means that the, the left half of the screen, which looks a little bit blurred, will look a little bit better. Hmm. Uh, hmm. But yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd basically okay. say that you've got bad B profile with what looks like to me, a shred sign in a consolidation. Now, Mayank basically has put a question up in the group saying, for the last baby, uh, well, do we see white lung at seven days? You can see white lung at any point in any baby if they have interstitial edema with alveolar edema. So what white lung basically signifies is that you have fluid in the interlobular, intralobular spaces along with alveolar edema. So you can see white lung with a baby who has congestive heart failure secondary to a PDA with significant left atrial, left ventricular volume load. And that can occur much later in a preterm baby when the PVR drops. So I wouldn't say that, you know, I, I, I wouldn't class, there's, there's a difference between transition of lung, like in TTNB where severe early transitional tachypnea of newborn presents with a white lung or a compact B profile, and then the baby transitions into a kind of a profile, which is double lung points uh, with, uh, I would say, just B profile to a normal profile. But actually, if this baby gets mnemonic consolidation, which results in toxin-related damage to the alveolar epithelium, you will develop interstitial edema. And that interstitial edema will cause fluid to enter into the inter and interlobular spaces you'll also develop alveolar exudate. Hence, you will get a white lung kind of an appearance. It's more related to what is happening at the level of the lung. <laughs> so that's answering Mayank's question. Nice images, funny. Uh, do you have another uh, case? Uh, thank you. Uh, no, uh, I have only one case. Thank you. The next person to share uh, I've got is Kirti. Kirti, go for it. So just again, for feedback, just to, to everybody, when you're on PowerPoint, what you could see is that I, I keep my images in loops, so they keep circulating. So try to keep your images in loop. And that just means you don't have to click on them again and again. Uh, may I ask a question while she's presenting? Yeah, sure. Is that my angle? So yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, you also told that the, another differential for that L5, L6 appearance could be PIE. Yeah. So would PIE have dynamic bronchograms? I was thinking it be more you're of right. static bronchograms. You, you're right. No, you're right. PIE wouldn't have dynamic air bronchograms, more likely to have static air bronchograms. But the shredded appearance of the lung, I'd say that is the differential that you have to be careful of. It could indicate mnemonic presentation, but I have seen it present with severe PIE as well. So 
I'm talking about the, the shred side. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is a 23 weeks, four days baby who was born about three weeks ago. So at this point, he was at the corrected age of 27 weeks. He, in the background, just to note that he had RGS with early onset sepsis, and he had another bout of sepsis with high CRPs, but never really grew anything on cultures. And he had been on a ventilator since birth. These are some of the images. So the first one. Whoa, okay. Yeah. I feel is the pleural line is irregular, broken. I couldn't appreciate the lung sliding. Yeah. The B lines were more like AIS. Yep. And I wonder if those are subpleural static air bronchograms with maybe shred sign. Absolutely. Uh, this is a beautiful image. Uh, sorry, not for the baby. I apologize. I mean, it tubed ventilated, this baby. Yeah, since yeah. birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, very bad chronic lung disease. Yes, that's where he's yeah. heading. Yeah. I mean, what you've got is absolutely beautiful images. Uh, so depth, first of all, 4.5 centimeters. Uh, a very good kind of uh, representation of what poor portal pleural sliding looks like. So what, what you can see even in the image on the right is the pleura sliding very poorly. Uh, for the image on the left, a completely destroyed plural line with a massive area of shred sign that's visible. So if you could just put your arrow on it, uh, Kirti, I'd be so grateful. Here? Uh, to the right. But that, that's that area there. It's a big area of uh, complete destruction of the lung, which is a massive shred sign. You have these small areas, small shred signs just to the left of it, which are also visible. And uh, classically, from our perspective, uh, what you can see is uh, again, these static air bronchograms just below with an area that's quite consolidated. So uh, again, uh, just over the shred sign. So when you put your arrow on the shred sign, just that big area of shred sign. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now that entire area above it, that entire area above it. Those, My cursor keeps disappearing. Worry, that is a big consolidation. Uh, okay. Below that, what you've got is classical compact B lines, beautiful compact B lines. So, again, just a reflection of the fact that this is a severe B profile. Compact B lines usually indicate severe B profile with a very severely consolidated lung with completely damaged and broken down pleura with a severe shred sign. Now, this is where I come back to Mayank, and I was kind of saying that with very severe kind of chronic lung disease, uh, especially if you get cystic change, you can find shred sign in that as well. Is, what's the CRP doing on this baby? So at this point, the CRPs had come down. It was about seven, eight. But at birth, this baby had CRP up to 65. 70. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So did, did we have any lung ultrasounds at birth? No, this is all that I did. No, sure. I mean, point. the question that I'd ask is whether you might have had a mnemonic consolidation at birth, which you've treated. A CRP of 265. What have you grown from ED secretions? So far, nothing. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So uh, your image on the right-hand side, uh, again, compact B lines, uh, irregular pleura, poor pleural sliding, uh, some er element of subpleural consolidations that you can see. Now, there's a very small area, very small area on the right side that looks it's like a small shed sign. No, the image on the right. Image on the right. Okay. So just go further to the right. So right okay. to the right, to the margin of the scan. Keep, come down. I can't yeah. see the side here. Uh, yes, just there. Just there. Just, just that area there, that area of lucency. Just looks like maybe you have a small shred sign there. Uh, okay. And you have a small effusion. Over here. Yeah. Above here. Yeah. I thought that was my probe, which wasn't. No, I think clean. you have a small effusion there. It would be very interesting to kind of see the diaphragmatic view. Because okay. that's where you'll see the maximum fluid collection. It could be the probe as well. But yeah, it looks very lucent to me. Okay. The only point against it is the fact that, you know, you kind of slightly, you don't see it in entirety in that region. So it would be very interesting to see a kind of a trans sub diaphragmatic view to see if there's collection there. But again, severe B profile with compact B lines. Okay. 
So poor sliding. So absolutely B dash profile. Uh, and uh, I'd say probably very bad chronic lung disease. This is the left side, right? Mm -hmm. Have yeah. you got the right? Yeah, yeah. And are these all the air bronchograms that we can Worse. Sorry, can I ask where are the air bronchograms on the left image? So I'm not convinced there are air static air bronchograms there. So for me, what I'd say is those are subtural consolidations. Okay. Yeah. They're not static air bronchograms. They're subtural consolidations. And the one on the right side, does that have? So again, what I'd say is that the question is, is that parents right? So there are definitely some static air bronchograms in the middle. Here? Right, yeah, just above, just above. Can you see those dots? So just yeah. below, just go further down. There, that's it. Those two. That's okay. a static air bronchogram for you. Again, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So very bright. If you come to the the right of the screen, move to the right, just horizontal. Keep going to the right, to the right, to the right. Stop there. Now just move down one millimeter. Those bright areas. Those are static air bronchograms. Okay. So fluid will appear. Fluid in those lungs as exudate with pneumonia will appear dark, but when it appears bright, it is air. So that is a static air bronchogram for you. Okay. But in, in the image on the right-hand side, at the top of the pleura, mm -hmm. that those are subpleural consolidations. They are not static air bronchograms. Okay. Okay. Then this is on the right side. This again, the pleura is broken and thickened. There yep. was no lung sliding. Again, compact B lines. Yep. I thought that these were air bronchograms, but I don't know if I'm right. So, uh, the, the air bronchograms, if you come to the left of the screen. Yeah. So there's, there's this Please. there. Beautiful. Those are static air bronchograms. This is classically mm -hmm. described as star in the night appearance. So mm -hmm. when you see bright stars in the night, and this is, this is an appearance that we describe with mnemonic consolidation. Okay. So again, shred sign. I mean, this is kind of an x-ray that I'd expect to see with, you know, a gram negative kind of an ammonia as well. Uh, that we see a lot of where I work in the Corniche at the moment, we have a lot of gram negative pneumonia. So did we grow anything gram negative from this baby? No, no, nothing. Okay. But the mom has GBS. Baby doesn't have anything. Okay. Fair. So she's so far. This, yeah. And Again, for those of you who like to use the terminology uh, glass rockets, so if you look at the right-hand side of the screen, there are these, this line of three that you see here. The adults would classically call them as glass rockets. I want you to stop using those terminologies. Just call them static B lines. These are B lines. So this is these three B lines that you see are beautiful. And then you see a compact area of B lines to the left. So come to the left, right to the left, parallel to these. So here. Yeah. No, further down, further down, further down, to the left, to the left, bottom of the screen. So keep moving to the left. I'll ask, I'll tell you to stop. So stop near the four. Stop near the four. There. So if you just move up vertically, that is a compact B line, that entire white area. Okay. Yeah. So those are compact B lines and these are B lines per se. Now, the reason you can see three B lines moving through the entire area of the lower half of the lung is because you've got tissue that is in sync. So the tissue is continuous. But what's happened when you move to the left side is that the upper half of the lung between zero and two is it's destroyed. It's, it's classically undergone ne necrosis. So like a necrotizing pneumonia. And you've got tissue in the middle with these bright areas, star in the sky appearance. That is what is a mnemonic consolidation. Now, some of you will then be able to understand that you've then got a little bit of an element of atelectasis, which is why you can see those compact B lines below that. So have you got the chest X-ray on this baby? Yeah, in the end. Okay, no problems. Carry on, very nice images, beautiful. On I would be able to get such nice images myself. So basically, on the right lateral side, again, the absent pleural line with absent sliding sign. Are these all then shred signs? Yeah. Or this is rib shadow? It, so it could be either. For me, I would say that when you move to the left of the screen, where you have this starred out appearance, the, not this image, the one on the left. Okay. That area below the, those, those dark areas to me could be shred sign. 
Over here, again, what I'd say is the reason I think this is shred sign as opposed to being shadows of the, the ribs is that they don't extend completely down. So okay. I do think there's an element of shred sign there. And then you have these static air brocograms in the middle. So very bad shred sign. Sorry, yeah, not good for the baby. Is but this a fractal sign? So or fractal is... and shred sign are the same thing. Okay, I thought the plural breakage was fractal and shred was... No, no. they're synonymous terminologies. Adults okay. like to call it fractal sign. We call it shred sign, yeah. Okay. And this is the x-ray with hyperexpanded lungs, PIA changes, right upper lobe collapse consolidation. And naturally, you'll have areas of atelectasis within this as well, because there'll be less well-aerated areas of the lung. But I think, you know, it's to say that even without looking at the chest x-ray, uh, those lungs look pretty horrible. And uh, this is probably a baby who might need steroids going forwards once you're absolutely certain you've kind of gotten top of the infection. But yeah, that's images. the next step now to start on dexamethasone. Yeah. Okay. Any questions about this case? Yeah, I have put one question that uh, I, I felt that the lung was moving quite uh, less. So uh, I just have a query. Can it give falsely give an impression of a static bronchogram? Instead of Not that I've read in the literature. I think what I'd say is that if it looks as bright as you could see yeah. on that star in the sky appearance, that mm -hmm. is very bright. For me, those are those are static air bronchograms. Absolutely yeah. no doubt about it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so... This was again a 24 week of four days who was born at a birth rate of 600 grams. Their section antenatal steroids were all given. This baby was now five days old, was intubated at birth on a ventilator requiring about six mils per kilo and maps of nine and 10. So this, uh, this I, was, I had done on day five of life. So on left anterior, is this just my probe that's making the plural line look irregular and thick and or no, I genuinely it's think it's irregular and thickened, yeah. But can you have irregular plural line and A lines? Because that means the lung is aerated. So the... Uh, so with preterm babies, yes. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So with preterm babies, the lack of maturity of the pleura can give you that appearance. Okay. Yep. And then there are some comet tails on the top. But it looks like a beautiful A profile. There's sliding. So again, stick to trying to... Uh, describe the lung in that kind of uh, okay. start with the pleura with the pleural line uh, always talk about sliding really really important and I think that is a crucial part of reporting as well because cl clearly what a lot of people what will happen going forwards is you will start picking up small pneumothoraces now mm -hmm. small pneumothoraces in different lung regions and that's why a comprehensive scan uh, that's transverse of at least R1 R2 R3 R4 L1 L2, L3, L4 is very important in the early preterm kind of groups of babies who have surfactant is because some of these babies will have small pneumothoraces. Things that you will not do anything about, but just from a kind of a perspective of reporting, mentioning the sliding is crucial if you're kind of in the situation where you're not going to be able to, I would say you should say it anyway, but for some of us, we're not going to be able to store loops. We'll, we'll only be able to print them off. You know, like if you work in a setup where you can't store loops, then you'll be printing off these images on paper and storing them in the file. And actually the only kind of uh, thing that will save you is if you contemporaneously then reported and said that there was sliding there at that time. Okay. Yeah. Then, yeah beautiful um, image. Yeah. On the um, right hand side. That is again an irregular plural line. Are these sub plural consolidations or? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So can I just ask which is, so th this is left anterior, that's left lateral. Mm -hmm. Because and, I have that linear probe, I can only take anterior lateral posterior because it covers the whole of the chest. chest. Okay. Yep. So again, what you're seeing with gravity as you move laterally is the fact that fluid, you know, tends to, with gravity, interstitial fluid in particular, tends to go into spaces uh, in the interstitial and basically makes the dependent areas of the lung look more, uh, I would say, with fluid as compared to the anterior areas of the lung. 
but also important that when you give surfactant, and especially in the early phases, the, the areas of the lung uh, that get aerated selectively are usually the right side, the right anterior zone. Uh, and the reason for that is obviously the right main bronchus tends to be a little bit more, I would say, amenable to getting more surfactant. But yeah, the left side over here shows classical B profile, maybe a few A, a lines coming in the middle, yeah. Yeah, just there. But actually for me, that's this is compact B lines with a, a B profile, good plural sliding, subplural consolidations. Uh, yep, I would agree with that, yep. And then in the figure on the right side, again, there's an irregular thickened pleura on the left here. Yep. And here it's just absent. Yep. Similarly, lung sliding is present here. It's and a beautiful image. Right. It's and a... are this, is this hepatization with shred sign? This no, is the liver. No, no. My gut feeling there is that you don't see any pleura at all. Yeah. And so what is what has happened is you haven't aerated that part of the lung at all. So when 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 a baby is born, the lungs are full of fluid. And if you look at there's a very nice uh, bit on transition from the first breath. Yeah. So I've when you look that. at that, the the initial area there, my, my gut feeling is that's lung that's not aerated, completely atelectatic. And clearly what you have is you have no air going in. So you cannot see the pleura mm -hmm. being established. I thought this was hepatization, like here, the liver, and it looks so It looks too bright to be hepatized. So again, when we say hepatized, can you see how the, the liver looks a little bit hypoechoic, less bright? Mm -hmm. For me, the real question I'm asking is, is, is that atelectatic lung? And okay. really, if you had surfactant in that area, would because your pleural margin, it's not established at all. I can't see anything, you know. And mm -hmm. for me to kind of say that there are subpleural kind of breakdown areas i'm not clinically convinced at this particular point my worry is that you haven't aerated that area of the lung at all so actually okay. what you've got is completely atelectatic lung okay and yeah. these bright spots what are these then maybe small elements of static air bronchograms that have gotten in okay yeah okay but definitely worry about an area of atelectasis okay what's your crp just curious the CRPs are low now, just seven, six, not more than that. Okay. And this is the right upper. So just, yeah. this is a baby that's intubated? Yes. So where was your ET tube at this point? That is, a, that is the most common reason for finding right upper lobe atelectasis in small preterm babies. So when I scan, the, the mm -hmm. first thing I'm thinking of when I look at R1, R2, and I see uh, an appearance like that, is I'm really trying to debate where my ET is and if it's low. And what I would do in this situation is I would go into the suprasternal view, look at my arch and look at the position of the ET in relation to the arch of the aorta. And, you know, the ET basically shows up as a bright point. I'll, I'll be able to show it to you in one of the scans that we've done. But my real question here is, do you have a little bit of atelectasis there? Uh, secondary, the tube being slightly low. But this baby's tube was adequately positioned. Okay. Could it be that it got atelectatic after the first uh, inflation and opening up? It's possible. It's possible. It might be the, the case that, how old is the baby in ours? Uh, 10 days old. Yeah, I should be. I sorry, mean, four, four, five days old. I'm sorry. Five days old at this particular point. I mean, you probably have an area of lung that's just not aerated enough at this particular point. Okay. Yeah, that is my feeling. And would be very interesting to see what your x-ray kind of shows. Because even when you look at the right Zor zone, mm -hmm. it's just in continuity. What you've got is, my gut feeling is the same reason there. Just again, just to point out, very, very important. You, you're not quite perpendicular here, which is why you have dropout in the, the top half. Okay. Uh, but what you've got is a little effusion there. Can you see at the top? Yeah. Yeah. You've okay. got an effusion. Okay. You probably have a very small minimal effusion here as well. Will it be more evident if you do M mode? So, uh, it will. So not that area of lucency that you see at the top. I okay. wish I could. So like if you follow the pleura. Yeah. Yeah. Just below you see those dark areas. That is fluid. Yeah. And it's very well apparent when you see the lower image, the right lower image here between the rib spaces. Yeah. Over here? Uh, lower down. 
lower down. Go go right to the bottom of the image. So, so no, no, no. Sorry, my apologies. So go right to the right of the image. Right, right of your screen. Oh, sorry. Right mm -hmm. of your screen. Now go to the top. See that lucent? Yeah, that's it. That, that's the element of effusion that you see over there. And again, when you look at the margin of mm -hmm. the, the image on the right, you see this area, again, which just does not have any plura. You've got a lot of static air bronchogram that's visible over there. This is static air bronchogram. Mm -hmm. And the real question I'm asking myself is, it is a consolidation, but is that atelectasis because you've got no plura at all? I just cannot establish any plura there at all. Okay, is mm. this not plura the whole here? It is at the bottom, but when you go to the top, can you define no. the plura anywhere below no. the ribs? No, no. I cannot define the plura at all. So mm. I would say that's an area that worries me. Okay. You know, is that an area of lung that is atelectatic in addition to having consolidation? The reason it's probably both is because you have static air bronchograms. And they are actually visible even in the previous image at the top. I thought this was dynamic because it came and went, but maybe it's static. It's, it's, the reason I use the word static is dynamic basically means moving in and out of the bronchioles. So you should mm -hmm. see them moving like a snake. Whereas okay. this is just... the the appearance that you're seeing is they appear less bright and more bright with breathing. Okay. But they're in one position. So just mm -hmm. that concept that you have in your head. So static and dynamic, basically dynamic moves in and out. Okay. The fact that they become bright and less bright, but mm -hmm. we stay in the same position. That's, that's static. Not okay. Yeah. If they stay in the same position okay. and mm -hmm. they appear more bright and less bright, they're still static. But for dynamic, they will move in and out. Okay. So, mm, okay. Thank you. Did you, you don't have the x-ray by any chance? I have the x-ray. Yep. This is the, I think, what we were looking yeah, at. Yeah, completely. I mean, for me, the question is whether you have an element of, and I think if you look at that tube, you know, you're right. It's probably, it's okay, but it's quite close it's to the crina. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, you know, for a baby that's moving in and out, I can't, mm -hmm. I cannot emphasize enough once when I do a scan and I look at that the first place my my thoughts go to is where is the tube and okay. uh, it's really important because especially with these babies you know I, I, the tube moving in is a very common reason for over ventilation of of the lung and actually for these extremely small preterm babies they develop PIE very quickly if you're just ventilating one lung and I, I would say it's absolutely crucial, you know, to try and make sure that your tube is kept as secure as possible. The most common reason that the tube migrates in is when we're trying to do cares, handling and moving babies supine prone. And I, I think it's really crucial that babies are, you know, we, we try to manage that aspect of them. But again, a very good example of the right side. If you look at that, I mean, can you, I can't show it to you, but it's can you see the margin of the collapse at the bottom there? So Where? it's very dense at the top. Yeah. Which would give me the feeling that this is not just consolidation. This is a collapse consolidation. And then you've got a reticular granular appearance mm -hmm. for the right. The left lung looks a little bit better. And I'm assuming the pick line was pulled back. Yeah. Okay. Well done. Um, beautiful images. Really lovely. I'm, I'm learning so much from everybody today. It's beautiful. I have one more case if there's... Yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. So I'm just, uh, we, we have time today uh, till five. Uh, at five, I will have to go, but we will have a lot of peer review. So please do not feel anxious if we miss out. So this is a 24 week or two days now, two months old with corrected age of 35 weeks, evolving CLD underlying PTA and is on a high flow of eight liters. These are some of the images. So. Beautiful. In the left, because this baby was laying prone, so I had taken posterior and lateral. Their plural line is irregular and discontinuous. Yeah. I think this right here is the fractal sign, but yeah. I was Very thinking. Small. And the compact B lines with B prime profile. Yeah. On this one, again, irregular, discontinuous, plural line, absent sliding sign with compact B lines. I wonder if these are subplural consolidation. They are. They are. What's the frequency on your probe? 
My frequency is always nine hertz. Yeah. So can just, um, you know, for everybody who's looking at these images, can you see how having a lower frequency gives you more depth? So again, for, you know, don't hesitate to play around, but these are absolutely beautiful images. Uh, and I think you described them very nicely. Again, what I want to say to everybody over here is don't assume that because you can see one area that shows a small shred of fractal sign, that this is going to be a massive pneumonia, that this is going to be a mnemonic presentation. Actually, what you need to do is clinically correlate. And there will be areas where the plura is broken down a little bit. And, uh, you know, a very good example that I sometimes see is uh, with babies who sometimes have a surfactant distribution that's kind of slightly differential. So in terms of, sorry, what gestation was the baby? It was... I'm born at 27 and 35 weeks now. Okay. So, I mean, it looks like a, a picture moving towards chronic lung disease. Babies yeah. in oxygen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Then on the right side, again, it's a discontinuous plural line with absent sliding sign. I, I wouldn't I say don't... absent. I wouldn't say absent. I just, again, just your terminology is very, very important here. Once you say absent or that the plural is not sliding, you're really implying the baby has an omothorax. Uh, and I, I would say that I think the spura is sliding in all the areas. So the right posterior, I, I feel relatively confident. And the reason I say that is if you just look at the comet tails as well, they move from side to side in each space. So Please. I'd probably say sliding is reduced, but I, I would be okay. wary of saying absent. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And, and then, and with B lines, B prime profile, compact yep. B lines. Yep. Beautiful. And in the right lateral, and I'm not sure why it was coming this way. Is it because of the lung pulse? So the question from my perspective is, it's a little bit too slow for lung pulse. Lung okay. pulse would be kind of the heartbeat. Uh, the real question I'm asking is, it's just probably the fact that the baby's inspiring and expiring. And what is okay. happening is that your, your B compact B lines are merging together at that point. And that is giving you a little bit of artifact over there. Okay. You're talking about the middle, right? Yeah. Where it gets mm -hmm. tense. I think it's just the difference between expiration, inspiration. Uh, I'd also say that your probe is not entirely perpendicular. Okay. So you might have an interaction of sound waves basically bouncing off each other and okay. getting trapped to give you this. I'd, I'd call that artifact. Okay. And I think what, what you know, if this is a breathing baby. Like if you want to see mm -hmm. whether that's artifact or not, uh, what you can do is try to get the baby to cry a little bit. And actually, if he cries and he aerates the lungs, that'll actually clear this out. Now, if it still persists while he's yeah. crying, then that, you know, the question that I'm asking is that consolidation. You get what I'm saying? Okay. My gut feeling is it's artifact because your B lines are merging just because of inspiration, expiration. But again, I can see the plural sliding everywhere. Now, these are classical uh, acoustic shadowing from the ribs. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, the last few cases where we saw very severe fractal or shred sign. Mm -hmm. Can you see how regular the top margin of the acoustic shadow is behind the rib? Whereas when we looked at your previous mm -hmm. images where we were confused whether that's a shred or a fractal sign, those mm -hmm. areas look quite irregular. Hence my worry that they could actually be shred sign. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. How can you tell a lung sliding in this? Because I thought that I couldn't see lung sliding. So is that on the left or the right? This right side. So on the right side, I'd say that you can see the plura moving laterally. So can you see the B lines and how they move? Yeah. So especially if you look at the top half, go to, no, yeah, just there, there's a B line that moves from side yes. to side. Yeah. So don't hesitate to use that as a marker of sliding. The problem is because your plura is quite irregular and your probe is not perpendicular, mm -hmm. you're kind of in a situation where you've lost the demarcation of the plural line that you see on the image on the left. Okay. But actually for me, when I look at the B lines underneath in the subplural consolidations, they move. So I, I, okay. I would argue that they're sliding there. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, just again, what I'd say is really important. Once you start saying the plural, plural sliding is completely absent with an A profile, you're really thinking of a nomothorax. Plural being absent with absent sliding, zero sliding. You're talking about complete atelectasis, lack of aeration of lung, which is not the case here. Mm. So again, go back to kind of thinking about your baby, thinking about 
your scan in its entirety and actually trying to kind of think about, well, if I'm saying it's sliding, actually I can see compact B lines. If this was complete atelectasis with complete absence of pleura and no sliding, which is the classical sign of complete atelectasis, I'd probably see what is a very hypodense area with nothing in it. Whereas here I can see compact B lines. So, okay. you know, it's, it's thinking about what we're trying to say. Okay. Well done. Very this nice. Piece, right? So, yeah. You got a Broviac in? Yeah, that's a Hickman line. Oh, you got a Hickman in. Okay. Yeah. Bad chronic lung disease. And again, what I'd say is that, you know, clearly from our perspective, the patterns with chronic lung disease, as Almedina will kind of tell you, is the, the progress and it's looking at resolution over a period of trying to do serial scans. Uh, some people talk about doing them weekly for the first four weeks to look at progression. Some colleagues using lung ultrasound scores to actually do them to look at disease progression and clinical course. But as a predictor of the severity of chronic lung disease and respiratory support, uh, there are the studies that she will share with us, which basically tell us how we, we, we can prognosticate the progress of chronic lung disease based on our initial lung ultrasounds in the first few weeks of life. Okay, thank Lovely. you. So next okay. person who is on my list to present today is Mayank. Can I ask you for a small favor? Yes, yeah, sure. Because you've presented before, can I yeah. uh, just, uh, and I've seen your images and they're absolutely amazing. Is it okay if I postpone you to the next batch? Sure, sure. That won't be a problem. Yeah, it's a, it's a marker of respect. Let me just put it that way. And I hope I'm selling it nicely because I know you're, you, you, you're desperate to present, but it's a marker of respect. So I was going to ask Dr. Zaradeen uh, if he'd like to share his images. Well, um, yes, I would love to, but uh, thank you very much, uh, Menek, for uh, for um, uh, offering me the place to present. I have only one case to present. Um, I, I, do you want me to share the uh, screen, or to do you get it from the Dropbox? Uh, no, I. If you could share the screen, yeah. that would be so yeah. kind. I'd be so grateful. No problem at all. Uh, let me just. Uh, Yes. And Suman, uh, after Dr. Zaridin, I was just wondering whether Suman could present because she's Let me just figure that out. I'm no sorry. problems. Uh, There'll be a green share button at the bottom. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then open system. For... I've also made you co host. Sometimes, if you're not co host, it doesn't appear, but. Uh, okay. Uh, I have it. Uh... There must be something that I need to do with my security and privacy, it says. Um, uh, so I've enabled sharing for everybody, but uh, so do you have a green share screen button at the bottom? Uh, yes, I do. Um, and if you press that, what happens? It... When I press on it, I get a um, like a window saying desktop one, whiteboard, iPhone, pad, choices. Yep, uh, so there'll be screen on that. You should be able to see your screen. Uh, no, uh, share. Sure. Let me just. Yeah. When I say open. Uh, 
Full desk access. I'm not sure. Can I uh, ask a friend? Can I get my... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely fine. What we can do is while you're asking a friend, I was going to ask the lovely uh, Suman Chaurasia. Uh, yeah. Suman, uh, would you like to share your screen? Yeah, sure. Thank you. I'm really grateful. Suman, uh, if you could just introduce yourself and just tell us where you're working and... Yeah. Uh, good evening, all, and good afternoon. Uh, I am at AMC case. I am a colleague of uh, mine. And uh, so um, it's been two, about three years here at AMC case. And uh, we work together. We have a small NISU. Lovely. So just for my colleagues from uh, across the, in Europe and everywhere. So uh, AIMS is the All India Institute of Medical Sciences and the, the premier institutes very similar to the Great Ormond Streets of the UK. And there are seven of them that are open. I think a few more opening up and uh, funny Priya who's presented previously works in the Postgraduate Institute in Chandigarh again, which is very reputed. So. Thank you for the, joining us. Uh, please feel free to share your screen. Yeah, go for it. Yes. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can, yeah. So I have just a, a one case today. Very nice, yeah. Uh, this is a baby admitted to the respiratory distress, born at 41 plus four weeks, uh, 2870 grams, uh, born by elective uh, uh, cesarean section, indication being previous uh, cesarean section. Uh, baby required uh, delivery room CPAP um, for respiratory distress and uh, uh, FIO2 of 30% maximum uh, for 30 minutes, and then baby was shifted to NICU for mild respiratory distress. Thereafter, baby did not require much of support, though some tachypnea persisted, uh, and it settled by four hours. Um, I have done this ultrasound a little later, um, about 24 hours, hours age, and I have used this uh, uh, Sonocyte machine and L25 Pro, uh, Gen mode, and the frequency is 9.5 hertz. And I apologize, I haven't done the posterior. All right. So I will show you the. So the Sonocyte is a beautiful machine. It's a beautiful right. machine, and these are beautiful images. Please go ahead. You can describe them. Yep. Yeah, so this is R1. Uh, so as you can see, uh, there is a, a sharp to the line uh, and um, regular. And there are A profiles mostly, uh, sorry, uh, A lines, uh, several of them equidistant. Very nice. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Looks like A profile. Yeah, I would agree. Less than, you know, maybe the, the top. Uh, left hand corner of R1, there are B lines that are visible, but yeah, I, right. I, I would agree yeah. that probably two in that intercostal space, not three. So, definitely yeah. when I look at the right hand side, there are no right. B lines. It's yeah, those are the two B lines that you see that you're highlighting very nicely there. Yeah. There are comet tails on the right, but no actual yeah. B lines. That's mm -hmm. an A profile. For me, what I'd say is that when you compare that point, there's a sharp demarcation between those B lines and the rest of the A profile. Uh, so, you know, I think if you had a wider view, uh, I would, you, you, I wouldn't call that a double lung point uh, based on just that image per se. I, I'd probably say that's an A profile. Yeah. Yep. Right. Very nice. So moving on to R2. Again, this is a short, uh, a regular plural line with uh, good sliding. And uh, just have... for, sorry to interrupt you, I'm just, uh, just because you've 
pointed it out really nicely. Are, are you using sharp mode in your machine? Because you, you no, know, this is, not sharp. this is not sharp mode. Okay. Uh, okay. That's great. Very nice plural line. Yep. Your focus right. is at the right place. Yep. Right. And so now we have these A lines and some B lines coming uh, in between. Yep. Um, but I would say it's um, mostly A profile. Yep. I would agree with that. I completely support that. Yep. Right. So moving to R3, again, uh, regular sharp plural line, good sliding. Uh, and this is uh, dominant A lines. Um, some yeah. B lines are there, but again, this is also A profile. I'm you sure you can see a B line? I could, yes, yeah, some, some, sometimes it's coming. Yeah. Okay, no. sure. Okay, yeah, definitely see some comment tails right. at the top that are coming through. So, what I'd say is that. Yeah. You know, there's that shadow that moves across. I'm not convinced that's a B line, but you've got okay. definite comet tails. It's it's a beautiful A profile. Extends all the way to the bottom. Now, okay. just because these images are so nice, uh, when you look at R2 and you compare R3, uh, right. what is really important is when we describe the physiology of A profile and A lines. Uh, so as you have attenuation and you move deeper into the lung, you right. tend to have A lines uh, becoming quite uh, mild. But actually, if you look at R2, the middle of R2, so just on the left-hand side, you can actually see the A-lines equidistant and they are actually visible to the same intensity and very similar in R3. And you know, for me, that is really good aeration. It's a mm -hmm. marker of very good aeration. So you know, these are nicely aerated lungs that I can see in R1, R2, and R3 and uh, uh, Plura moving very nicely. And R4, what do you think about R4? Uh, uh, sorry, I have one question to ask please, you. Please, please go for it. Yeah, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Is this a lung point that I'm seeing? Uh, so it's a lung uh, pulse. So that's lung pulse that yeah. I think you can see just at the bottom there, yes, not a lung yes, point. Yes. No, that's liver. Lung pulse. Yeah, that's lung pulse, I mean. that is lung pulse. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yep. Right, right. So uh, moving to R4, again, we have a, a sharp regular plural line uh, with uh, good sliding, uh, mostly A profile. Here, there are some uh, B lines. Uh, this is again, I think the liver part. Yeah, you're right, it's the liver. Right. So, uh, so again, this is also A profile. Yeah. yeah, and there is, I would agree, that is a, a B line that moves all the way to the bottom. Uh, my gut feeling is probably you can see at least two that I can definitely see moving across to the bottom. Yeah, they kind of merge them. in right. the middle half of the screen. And again, this is where yes. I would caution you against. Some people will ask me the question, are those compact B lines? Mm -hmm. They're not. The reason they're not is this baby is inspiring and expiring. And what right. is happening is when you expire, naturally aeration of the lung becomes less. And that area basically then looks like a, a compact, it's not a compact B-line actually. And I think if you were to get this baby to cry a little bit, what you'd see is better aeration and a complete disappearance of that image. But yes. uh, what it does highlight is again, that as you move, this is a baby in supine position. Right. So when you move from R1 to R4, can you just see how uh, you get a little bit more of a kind of a B appearance towards R4? Because yes dependent nature of fluid in the lungs. Now, I'm just giving you an analogy, and this is obviously a baby who's transitioning, who's quite stable with well aerated lungs. But when you work out lung ultrasound scores, what will happen is that if you're looking at them in the positions that are described, which are the anterior and lateral positions, uh, and the baby is basically supine, then you're getting scores from regions that obviously will have less fluid. And one of the questions people ask me is, well, if I did the posterior regions, they would actually be, because of gravity, have higher scores. So when we don't do lung ultrasound scores for the posterior regions, are we missing out? And actually there is absolutely no evidence to show at this particular point that extending lung scoring is any more sensitive or better than actually just doing Bratz method, which is the anterior and lateral regions. But again, yes. one of the other questions is, well, what if my baby's supine? What should I do? 
Well, actually, what you can do is you can do the lung ultrasound score using BATS method, but just using the posterior region of the lungs and the lateral regions for scoring as opposed to using the anterior regions. The alternative mm -hmm. is you can actually move your baby and you can put the baby supine, but then give him 60 minutes and come back because it takes time for fluid to actually transition. But these are beautiful images. I, my, my, my question is, do you know what depth they're at? Uh, it's at four, four semi. Yeah, that's that's uh, good. You've got really nice resolution all the way to the bottom. I I have nothing to add. Very nice. I, I love your machine. Right. So I just uh, wanted to ask you, uh, so for the posterior views, uh, we have to wait for 60 minutes. Uh, uh, so it's not always feasible. It would take a lot of time at the bedside. I completely agree. So, which is why if, yeah. you, if you're using lung ultrasound scores like in BATS method, then actually the recommendation and what Nadia will teach you is you don't have to turn the baby, put him supine. Just do the posterior zones like you would do the anterior zones. Mm -hmm. So you would do R5, R6. You would do R3, R4 as opposed to doing R1, R2 because the baby is prone. You get what I'm saying? Right, right. Okay. okay. So, so move to the next slide. Yeah, sure. So here we are. Um, so this is the L1, and we can see the pleural lung line. pulse. Very nice lung pulse visible there. Can you see the lung pulse, everybody? L1. So can you see the pleura is sliding, but it's also right. pulsing. Is is this the point? No. So yeah. So just to the left. This one. So move to the left, left of the screen, left left at the plural margin. Yeah. Right. So can you see how the the the, the plura basically, while it's sliding, it's also pulsing. So you have lung pulse and lung sliding both. And right. the reason I say that is this tissue above. So this tissue above the plura, if you move to the extreme left, that is pulsating. So that is actually lung pulse with lung sliding. Yeah. Right. I think if you see lung pulse in situations like this, your plura is well established. It's not a problem. But I think if mm -hmm. you see lung pulse where plura is not established, where uh -huh. you see the kind of pattern that we saw with GT slides, then atelectasis, complete atelectasis should be thought of. Right. But yeah, very nice. Yeah. And uh, there are A, A lines. They are equidistant. Yeah. Um, uh, I, can, I can't see any B lines. So this is, uh, or the gain is a little less. I think the gain is a little bit less. Yes, Plus, yes. my only other comment is whether your probe is completely perpendicular. That is the challenge with L1. So when you do L1 mm -hmm. and you're high up, your probe right. basically loses contact. And I think as you've moved slightly higher up, you've lost a little right. bit of contact, which is awesome. why as you move to the top of the slide, you mm -hmm. kind of lose out on a little bit of the depth penetration there. Possibly. That's also why the plural looks a little bit more bright in the middle. So if you look at the plural in the middle, it's brighter than at the top, which looks blurred. And I think that's a reflection of loss of contact as opposed to pathology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. You mean this this part? No, that's not plural. Plural is below that. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. plural. So can you right. see how that plural doesn't look as bright as the plural in the middle? And that is probably yeah. because you have a little bit less contact of the probe there. So the ultrasound okay. waves penetrating that part of the lung, they're also not giving you a very nice delineation of the A-line artifact. Whereas if you mm -hmm. look at the center, your A-line right. artifact is much better. So that is because of loss of right. contact. Yeah. I think if you had good contact, and again, mm -hmm. the one thing that you, you can do in those situations is to try and keep the contact. You might instead of, so if you look at my hand, you're keeping the probe like that, but your chest is sloping off like this. So you're losing the contact there. So really what you need to do is try and keep the contact of the probe. So you might have to move it a little bit to keep that contact. Right, right. right. Yeah. So my apologies. This is my first ultrasound. So no, no, no. It's a beautiful ultrasound. And please do not apologize. Trust me to say that yeah. uh, these images are absolutely beautiful. And I would say that what is important is this could be a baby who's not cooperating. Big fat babies, you know. Uh, they well, actually he was sleeping soundly, and uh, it's the loss of contact is probably because I was not keeping it perpendicular. But very nice images. Carry on, please. Yeah. Right. So moving to L2, uh, uh, this is the well regular and sharp plural line, good yeah. uh, sliding. Yeah. Uh, we can see A lines. 
yeah uh, across, but there are some b lines but not more than 3 probably sure um, but towards the lower part there are some b lines uh, so can't say whether this is a double lung point but uh, i would say it, it may be an av profile uh, it's a little bit difficult so my only comment over here with these images is is whether your depth is too far in okay and whether you just want to reduce your depth a little bit so right. the other thing is whether you've kind of zoomed in on that particular area so if you zoom out you'll be able to get three ribs mm -hmm. and a wider field whereas over here i'm i'm getting two ribs three intercostal right. spaces and you might just want to try and zoom out a little bit which will also make your pleura appear regular i just wonder again whether yeah. some of what we're seeing here is a little bit artifactual possibly because you're quite zoomed into this image so th these are also artifacts probably i mean that's the superficial area that skin muscle okay. then you have ribs in the middle and then you've right. got this very irregular pleura with what look like might be b lines but what is giving me a feel of the fact that you zoomed in is mm. again you've got this dense area of whiteness in the middle so uh -huh. i just wonder clinically from my perspective whether if you just zoomed out a little bit to get a slightly wide because you're using a linear probe which should have a large footprint right right it's is this a hockey stick or a linear probe this is a linear probe yeah it should have a large footprint so you should be able to get a slightly bigger image and you might just be zoomed in too much which okay. again when you zoom in too much it just makes the image more granular and grainy which is what you're okay. seeing and that will obviously affect how we interpret the images as well so right. maybe for your next kind of review let's try and see if you can zoom out a little bit and get a slightly larger footprint with a few more ribs visible and right. see if that makes a difference sure but yeah i mean what i'd say at the moment is it's very difficult to see good a lines here these are predominantly b profile with b lines but with good pleural sliding uh, it might it be the not... case that you have fluid in the, and that that area of denseness in the middle again i just wonder whether there's artifact more than what i'd say are a lines it's a little bit tricky for me to say okay but okay. when you come to l3 so you want to describe l3 because that's a beautiful image yes so this is the pleural line sharp yeah. and uh, well moving uh, then there are a lines uh, very good here yeah. and i think this i have lost it to resolution but these are also a lines yep yeah. uh, similarly in this space also yep. uh, there are some v lines and though there are some comet uh, tails and especially yep. here i think uh, so yes. but uh, i would say this is uh, a profile yeah so on the right side a profile and right. what you're seeing is when the baby breathes you get a better a profile right. so it's you're getting better aerated lung to the right of your screen as compared to the left of the screen mm -hmm. so i mean the question that i would ask again if we zoomed out and we thought that those were b lines that are coalesced which have kind of removed the a lines to the left of your image is whether you have a lung a double lung point there okay. no on the right so can you see the problem is you get a, a rib shadow as well and it could be that that's rib shadow that's giving you that sharp appearance but i think what i would say is when i critique these images probably just try to zoom out a little bit just to try and see if we can get a slightly bigger image sure. with a wider footprint here are in these a lines these are a lines like classically yeah these are a lines no b profile but then if you look to the left of the screen it's very oh. difficult to see any a lines oh, you can yeah. see b lines there but it's a very grainy image but are these a lines this one and this one so they're not continuous they could be but again that's where i would say having a slightly wider footprint would give okay. me more confidence in saying that because my right. my only worry about calling them a lines is they're not continuous with each other so while they could be a okay. marker of the plural kind of line i mean mm -hmm. it's a little bit tricky on this image for me to be absolutely certain whereas to the right of that image there's no doubt in my mind but because your image has such a small footprint it's kind of compressing the image into a very small area which is making interpretation a little bit difficult okay so i would say that 
the reason I'm 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 trying to mention this is I think if you had a wider footprint in a crying baby, mm-hmm. you might actually find that your images show much better A lines and lung that's more aerated, which okay. you you saw in your right sided images as opposed to those on the left side. Okay. So let's have a look at your L four image. Okay, so beautiful A lines. Can you see the difference there? Yes, yes. And you see, those are classical A-lines. You can see them all the way to the bottom. Yeah, bamboo sign. Yeah. Bamboo sign. And can you understand why I'm a little bit reluctant to say on your L3 image that I'm confident the left half of the screen has A-lines? Because yes. this is classical exactly. bamboo sign. And right. what you've got... This is a double lung point. Probably. Yes, absolutely. And the pleura falls away. Now, that is because of you've lost contact during that point at the image. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Yeah. So it just falls down. It's that's a reflection of just loss of contact. Okay. Yeah. So that is not a consolidation. Just, mm-hmm. you know, some people might think there's a console. It's not. It's just the fact okay. that you've lost contact. But that is a very nice double lung point that you see there with a B profile at the bottom and a bamboo sign with A profile at the top. Yes. Beautiful. So, uh, for a, your first images, they're beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, actually, uh, uh, we do not have an X-ray because this baby was doing fine, so we did not do an X-ray. Though, uh, if if it were there, it would have added more to the information. No, no, that's that's okay. That's okay. I mean, I I think we got a feel of you know your baby being virtually right. normal. You know, the right lung and the left lung. My gut feeling again would probably have come back as being nearly normal, probably with a few areas that are still showing transitioning. So well done. So we have time for one more, and I'm going to ask Jean to present. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. I'm grateful. And anybody who's missed out this occasion, because I'll be updating you about the next peer review, there might be slight changes to the program, not for the sessions this week, but uh, guys, we'll be picking up the intensity a little bit now as we start going through individual pathology. Uh, in terms of your peer review sessions. So it's it's also to make sure that we're giving everybody enough time. So don't feel pushed to have to attend all the peer review sessions. The idea is as you get images, we give you the time based on your availability. Go for it, Jean. Jean, I'm pronouncing your name correctly, right? Please unmute yourself, Jean. Jean, we can't hear you. You might have to unmute yourself. Uh, there we go. Go for it, yeah. Okay. So, Jean, just an introduction. Uh, Hello. Hi, everyone. Can you see my slides? We can. Yes. Okay. Super. Um. So, I'm. My name's Jean. I'm a uh, consultant neonatologist, and I work in the UK. Um. And I work at the John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. Um, so it was really great seeing everybody's images. They're really excellent quality. Um, and um, it's my first time saving them onto PowerPoint. So apologies if I haven't done it the right way. Um, so I've got two cases to share. Um, and um, to begin with, I'll just show you which ultrasound machine we use, which is a GE machine. Um, and the images I'm going to show you today are with the Microlinear Pro. Um, so the, the first case I'm going to present um, is a baby who was on high dependency care, um, so relatively well baby. Um, so term born at 37 plus six weeks at 3.6 kilos, male baby, um, born following a cesarean section for failure to progress. Um, he'd actually been in a breach presentation and there was a failed external cephalic version. Um, And um, following birth, he had been well and so was on postnatal ward, um, but at three and a half hours of age, presented with respiratory distress, so some subcostal recession, 
Um, low saturations of between 89 to 91% requiring vapor therm, uh, which is our what we use um, on my unit um, as nasal high flow uh, therapy. Um, so I don't have um, video videos of all of the um, images that I'd done. Okay. Um, and I had some difficulty saving them from the machine. So I'm going to take another look at it. Um, but this is sort of what I've tried to do using um, yeah. our, pack, our pack system. Um, so this is the first image. Um, and what I saw was a sliding plural line uh, with some mm -hmm. thickening. Yeah. Um, in addition, the A lines were less visible, but I saw some quite confluent B, B, uh, B lines um, on the images. Just remind me the uh, age of the baby at birth was, uh, gestation of the baby. So term, yeah, 37 plus six, but cesarean section. And how many hours old yeah. was the baby when we did these scans? Um, so it was about 24 to 48 hours of age. Okay. So not immediately after birth. So it was quite an unusual finding in a term baby, I suppose. Um, and this this one, I, I don't know why this loop is, is slightly slower, um, but here again, you can see a thick and plural line with sliding. Um, and I wondered if there were some pockets of shred sign that I could see. I don't think so. Clinically, no. I can see continuous pleura in that middle image. Uh, mm -hmm. What I am a little bit uh, worried about is whether you have some element of subpleural consolidation there. Uh, when I go back to L1, so let's just have a look at L1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So again, it's a thick irregular pleura. Uh, and just if you look at the middle of that image, can you see how dense it looks? Yes. And I just wonder yes, if there's an element of subpleural consolidation there. Uh, for me, that's a complete B profile. Uh, I cannot mm -hmm. see A lines anywhere, and I definitely can see subpleural consolidation. Was this an elective cesarean, mother not in labor? Um, so she was in labor, though, um, but her waters hadn't broken. Okay. And uh, the what was the indication for cesarean? So it's a breach presentation. Breach presentation. Okay. Yeah. And did the baby need any resuscitation at birth? Was he flat? Not, not immediate. No, not immediately. He was in good condition, but at three and a half hours of age, was noted to be hypoxic and had respiratory distress. Sure, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You can describe L three. Yeah. Yeah. So, so L three um, also shows a thick and plural line, and you can yeah. see it's quite irregular. Yeah. Um, and it looked, it looks um, like it, it, the the plural line is broken there. On, and um, my so gut feeling at the moment is when when you kept your probe, uh, it's not so because you can see the slant in the pleura. Uh, so some of the irregularity yeah. is because of the movements of the baby and the probe not being entirely perpendicular. Now, this is a real challenge when you're using the hockey stick in a big baby. And my mm -hmm. advice would be that if you've got the linear probe, as opposed to using the, I like using the hockey stick in a preterm baby. We've got the GE mm -hmm. as well. And the reason for that is it, the footprint is perfect for a small preterm baby. But for a big baby, the problem that you're going to face is A, the, the kind of footprint that you're getting. You, you're getting two ribs, but we're really getting a feel of maybe one and a half intercostal space in each of these. Uh, on the left, the L1. In the middle mm -hmm. image, we're getting two intercostal spaces, which is reasonable. But uh, the challenge is some of the plural irregularity that we're seeing is probably because of the challenge uh, of getting a hockey stick to kind of be completely well perpendicular in that area. And the depth, do you know what yeah. depth you were at? No, so I need to go back and have a look. But I agree with you. I think the linear probe would produce much better images. Um, and the baby was crying, so yeah. quite it's tricky never, to... That um, is the trickiest bit to, with the hockey stick in particular. Yeah. My only other comment yeah. is that when the baby's crying and you're losing your, your kind of footprint, you tend to press harder. And when you press harder, mm -hmm. the baby moves away and that results in loss of contact. So the art of holding mm -hmm. your probe is basically, you really want to rest it on the baby and not press at all. And let okay. the baby breathe against the probe 
And sometimes what you find is there is a little bit of loss of contact, but try not to press harder if you feel there's loss of contact. Just leave the probe there in contact with the baby, trying to keep it as perpendicular as possible. What is really nice about these images is definitely you can see poodles sliding in all of them, which is really reassuring. But I would agree they look like dominant B profiles. Uh, L3 may be a hint of an A line starting to come in. So if you just want to press L3 again, so just in the middle there. Yeah. Uh, again, just I just worry that there are yeah. subtural consolidations there. But again, the worry that I have is is that because we have a loss of contact. So, but let's let's see yeah. the further images. Let's look at your other images. Yeah. Okay. So I I had some technical difficulties with my images. No it's okay. Um, That's right. So I I had to sort of redo this. Uh, no problems. Presentation. So so I've got the um. I've got the x-ray, if that's helpful. Yeah. Um, so here, you know, there were bilateral streaky changes. Um, and you can see air bronchograms behind the the, yeah. the heart border. Yeah. And again, what I'd say is that my clinical feeling looking at that x-ray is more RDS than TTN. But I think what I'd say is we really need a comprehensive scan. A comprehensive scan is really important yeah. because... Clearly, if you're saying double lung points, uh, there are studies which actually show that double lung points are better seen, uh, you know, with transition. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to actually do all lung fields, at least the anterior lateral ones, to be able to say that. But the the marker that would kind of point me towards thinking this is more RDS is the fact that you have subplural consolidations, which are usually never seen in mm -hmm. PTN. The other aspect to it is that your kind of your plura with TTN is usually regular. It might be blurred, but it's regular. Whereas in some of the images, you know, in particular L1, L2, it's irregular. So the challenge with making a diagnosis like that in a term baby is I would I would caution you about using one set of images to make that diagnosis. And my feeling is that if you're really thinking diagnostically in this situation, doing serial mm -hmm. ultrasounds really helps. So it's kind of doing an ultrasound maybe at about four, maybe six, 12. Now, the argument is, well, that's a lot of handling for people to learn. And I would agree it's a mm -hmm. lot of handling. But maybe doing an ultrasound just maybe at two hours and then looking at an ultrasound at 12 hours, uh, you know, it's two minutes. And it can actually give you a trend analysis in what the actual imaging looks like. But I think if you had subplural consolidations at the start and at 12 hours, that's not going to be TTN for me. That's going to be more RDS. Yeah. But very nice images. Yeah, I'll try that for next time. Um, and then my my next case uh, yeah. is an X extreme prem uh, birth weight was about a kilo, uh, was ventilated for eleven days, had a quite a you know over a month of high flow, and then was on low flow at the time and transitioning to special care, but had uh, three episodes of apneas requiring neopuffing. Yeah. Um, and and so. Um, Again, I have incomplete images of, of okay. my scan. Um, and so here in, in the first image, I can see um, a plural line uh, that looks like it's it, it's sliding and looks continuous, but it is thickened. Yep. Um, and on the scan, I could see uh, the occasional A line uh, but more of a, a B, B line pattern, which almost look confluent in some areas. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's, I'm assuming that's the heart at the top. That's, so just at the top there, above yeah. this, that's heart, right? Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Lovely. Yep. So, yep. Yeah, absolutely right. And it's a very nice image. Good depth. Uh, the footprint is much wider obviously because it's a smaller baby. Can you see how you've smaller got baby. a much yes. larger area that's visible? Yeah. But I would agree with your findings, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And um, in the next picture, um, I can see that the plural line is sliding as well. Um, it does look thickened. Yep. Yep, I would agree. Some subplural so consolidation. Slightly, yeah. yeah, slightly irregular at some yep. places. Um, you can see A lines and B lines. Yep. Uh, so my only comment about this image is you're getting very dark towards the bottom. Uh, you're using a high frequency. Yes. 
So you mm -hmm. might just want to reduce your frequency to get a little bit more kind of uh, more delineation of more the depth. deeper part of the image. It's not contact. Yeah. Your contact is perfect. It's more the fact that when you're using a high frequency, the superficial part of the lung mm -hmm. tends to appear better. Now, just remember the GE does not have focus. The GE machine is built in a way that uh, the, the pixels, so when you apply the entire footprint, it will optimize the pixels at every level. So, you know, you, your focus will not, like you could, you could put your focus anywhere, but actually as long as you have contact, you really might have to play with the frequency on the GE machine and actually reduce your frequency to try and get better delineation of the deeper part of the images. Now, the way to do that okay. is when you go to the GE machine and you, you select your preset, there's a button for yeah. frequency. You press that button for frequency and you can turn that okay. down and it will give you a guide based on your preset level of how much you can change it. But usually, uh, you know, uh, the probe, I think it's eight to 15. So you can take it as down as eight, as low as eight. Mm -hmm. But that'll help optimize the, the deeper part of your images. So Thank we'll just you. have a look at L3 here. Yeah. So again, so. Um, so yes. And, yeah. and here I wondered. Um, Subtural consolidations. Yeah. And maybe some static air bronchograms. Just if you play it again, right in the center of the image there. Yeah. You see them? That, that to me looks like a static air bronchogram there. So what's the age of your baby now? Um, so I think the baby was about two and a half months old, yeah. um, X 27 weaker. Um, but basically he had had an aspiration due to reflux. Yeah, nothing that kind of stands out as being mnemonic on that left side. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, for me, mild chronic lung disease with the L3 lesion being a little bit worse than the other two, but actually L1, L2 don't look bad at all. So, yeah, I mean, just that middle zone so, there. Yeah. But the pleura is irregular. Here. Yeah. So yeah. you have subpleural consolidations and just in the middle, again, what I'd say is you have some static air bronchograms there. So it would be interesting to keep yeah. an eye on that area. See, see what we saw on x ray, but this potentially you could might see a middle lobe yeah. consolidation there. So, would you expect something more profound if it was a significant, if you, you had know, that there was significant aspiration. mnemonic change? Experience yeah. usually says right main bronchus, right sided lung more predisposed. Uh, mm -hmm. You usually see a collapse consolidation. Now, in the early stages where it's non infective, what you might see if it's just full of fluid is lack of aeration of that part of the lung. So very similar to the atelectasis that you saw with a maybe an element of air going in and out of that fluid. And that would give you dynamic air brochograms. Mm -hmm. So kind of very similar to a mnemonic consolidation. I'm not really convinced here that this would be a sign of aspiration in itself. It's a very small area. It's less than an intercostal space. Significant aspiration, you know, causing a mnemonic kind of consolidation would be translova. The challenge for us is we're not being able to demonstrate it because we haven't looked at all the areas of the lung. Have you looked at the right side? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I did, but I don't. I haven't saved everything onto this presentation, so I'll do that next time. Sorry. That's the, please don't apologize. This is about yeah. pattern recognition. <laughs> okay. uh, for yeah. me, what what we need to do is we need to pattern recognize. I'm going to mm -hmm. thank everybody who's shared their images today. I'm really grateful. Uh, I know it's a long session for those guys who are not presenting, but I think what is important from my perspective is the fact that you're looking at different patterns in your hip, hip you know, kind of recognizing those patterns at this particular point. Uh, so, Jean, do you want to just comment on that x-ray? Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, so, so um, this, this boy um, had um, three episodes of severe um, apneas and desaturations needing uh, IPPV. And at, at those points in time, he had milk that was found in his mouth. Um, and we think he may have an element of reflux and he, he had a speech and language review for that. Um, 
so he remained very well throughout this. And, and to, to be fair, he didn't really have a significant increase in oxygen requirement or any increased work of breathing, which I guess would be in keeping with his the first two lung ultrasound images that you saw. Um, on the x-ray, you can see some increased uh, perihylar opacification, uh, particularly around the perihylar regions. Um, I felt this was worse on the left compared to the right, um, but there's no evidence of any pleural effusion um, and there are no air leaks seen either. Completely agree. So very nice. Uh, what I was going to say is just to guys to give you a flavor now is we're moving towards pathology now and what we will be covering in order would be respiratory distress syndrome in the preterm and the term neonate. So the next three sessions would hugely focus on that. Keep bringing your cases, whatever you get, we will continue to discuss them. But the session that Nadia is doing on Friday is purely theoretical, no peer review. So she will be talking a lot about respiratory distress syndrome. Uh, the session that we're covering with Abhijit on Sunday will have peer review for the first 30 to 45 minutes, followed by Abhijit's presentation. And then after that, we will have a little bit of a gap. Uh, I think the session after that is on the 19th. So I'll update all of you. Any questions very quickly before I disappear? That's really kind. No, thank you. Thank you. Have a, have a good day, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you.